can't tell if they kept. Uh, Andy's still thinking on his, and it looks like he likes his. And uh, Josh, I think, is right there with him, so we're going to see action happen. And he's going to go to 19, and maybe 17. 17. He's going to grab Breeding Pool into what I believe will be a Glistener Elf, and he will pass it back to Josh. He's currently searching his deck for his Breeding Pools. see a cut. Breeding Pool is going to play a Noble Hierarch. Yeah, of course. There are two creatures that you usually play on turn one. One of which is the mana one. Uh, so Hierarch's going to come down for Andy and present him to possibly a turn two Blighted Agent with uh, Pendlehaven or something. An Island into Serum Visions is going to be played for Josh. He's going to draw and scry two. He's going to take a second to ponder about these scries and check his hand. Uh, Make sure he wants to set him up how he needs to draw them, if he needs either of them. Uh, the best thing about scrying is putting the dead cards on the bottom, and uh, that way you don't have to draw them. So he does just that. He puts one on the bottom, one on the top, and passes it over to Andy. Ooh, that looked like a... Oh, I thought it was a Rancor, actually. It turns out it was a Wooded Foothills. Uh, Foothills is going to be sacked, putting Andy to 16 here. And I think he's just going to, yeah, he's just going to grab a regular forest. He has plenty of uh, color mana. He has access to white for Apostle's Blessing. He has access to blue for Distortion Strike or Blighted Agent or Pact of Negate. Well, I doubt he's not going to play Pact this early, but he has access to blue. Um, and I think we're going to see a Blighted Agent. Yes, Blighted Agent's going to come down for Andy. And it looks like Josh has a Lightning Bolt in hand. So... He might be fetching out a Steam Vents this next turn. Thanks to everybody watching, as tomorrow we're going to be streaming at noon. Uh, it's going to be really fun. It's Star City Games IQ Preliminary Pro Tour Qualifier, and it is modern format just like this. We're at Hometown Hobbies in downtown Huntington, West Virginia. It's a gorgeous place, and it's definitely worth checking out if you ever get the chance. Uh, a lot of people come down for Marshall. Uh, to watch the Thundering Herd play, and I gotta say, it's nothing is more fun than to watch those boys uh, go out there and hustle. As this town puts their heart and soul in uh, football. So, it's always fun when you see a community come together for something, and uh, that's what we're trying to do here at Hometown, and bring uh, magic, um in this area uh, to light for the world. And it looks like an Apostle's Blessing is going to save the Blighted Agent, and he's going to go down to 14 to do so. And I think Josh had to, yes, he lost three or five life, turns out. Uh, so he's at 15. And he's going to draw and see if he can just possibly win, assuming Josh doesn't have a Spell Pierce, Spell Snare, or a Vapor Snag. Three mana for a Wild Defiance, and that should be lethal. Uh, if yeah, it's count yours too, Josh. Uh, Lightning Bolt no longer kills that. And he said, alrighty then. Let's see if he has the double mutagenic growth. Uh, if he does, that is lethal this turn. So Blighted Agent is certainly going to get in there. Trigger Exalted. That's just two. And that's all. So right now Josh has two poison. Josh is going to pass it back. And uh, if you notice, it looks like Josh has a bunch of basics, so he might have brought in Blood Moon. Bye. Looks like he's going to Deceiver Exarch, tap down the Blighted Agent. Uh, unless he has an Apostle's Blessing that's going to work. If he has Apostle's Blessing, an Apostle Blessing it calling blue. It will be a four attack for six, seven total uh, to put Josh at seven in fact. Uh, he'd be three off. Any spell would win him the game so right now he is finds of Hess winning it in that. 
doesn't do it, it, it will make it an 8-8 eight, eight, um, with C5, 6, 7, 8. It'll be a 9-9 nine, nine with the Noble Hierarch. But he does, he is able to block. Oh, where he, oh it's unblockable. Ex <laughs> ignore me, it is super unblockable. Uh, so we're going to go to game three because I forgot that that card is straight up unblockable. <laughs> Which is why it's he's playing that deck, of course. Uh, so we're going to reset them both at 20. And uh, Josh is going to be on the play in the third game. And after this uh, round, we're going to be cutting the top eight. Uh, I know two players are in it for sure. Carter from earlier. We've seen him on stream twice. And also Chucky Davis. Uh, he used to be a hometown regular. He recently, he was another one of the doctors. He uh, got matched uh, for residency at a different place, so he moved away. But he's in town actually for our pre-PTQ. Uh, he traveled four hours to get here. So... I know that it, it's not just him like coming to hang out with friends, it's actually him coming to play Magic at some place that uh, gives him prizes that he feels are worth winning. To give you an idea, somebody traveled four hours to get here to play in our tournaments. Uh, we really do try to go above and beyond to uh, you know, attract players and uh, new friends and stuff, so if you like what you see or you, know, you like what we do, please like us on Facebook and follow us on the stream. It's going to be uh, fun times all around at hometown. And uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get Chucky on camera for any of the Swiss, but if he is in top eight, you better believe he's going to be on stream. Uh, he hasn't been on stream since he moved away, the FNM before he moved. Uh, he wore the Raiden hat, like the uh, like Raiden from Mortal Kombat. That's where we got that hat from. I don't think he brought it in, which is unfortunate, because I'd love to wear it with these awesome, super stylish hipster glasses, courtesy of my roommate. Um, I'm so underground, I can barely breathe. Josh looks at his hand, and it looks like there's a land, a lightning bolt, and a serum visions, but he's going to mulligan it away. It might have just been a swamp. Uh, Andy's checking his out, and he's thinking on it. Looks like he has a couple lands, maybe. I can't really see what Andy has. He holds his cards in a very unique way. It's almost exactly vertical, like no, not really an angle to it. Um, he is the y-axis when it comes to holding cards. Josh down to six, looks at a six, and it looks like that was a little bit better. Uh, keeps it and passes, watery graves into Andy's top deck breeding pool, uh, putting himself down to 18 life to cast uh, Glistener Elf. So he's going to go ahead and start off strong. Uh, Josh, I don't see, has a quick piece of removal, but I could be wrong, but there's a Spell Sky draw. That is a very good card to have. Uh, makes it to where Andy can't straight up kill it. Uh, unless he gets his nature claims or um, something of that nature. Uh, he's going to draw one swept teeth and crack it, and I think he got exactly what he needed. I think he might have been landlight in this hand. Um, so Andy's going to go down to 17, grab a forest. Once again, here at Hometown, uh, try to remember that we offer free FNM entries to our players who wear our shirts. Uh, if you want a very stylish Hometown Hobby shirt, we um, are running low on the non-royal blue col colors. The light blue, the Carolina blue, I should say, or the black. Uh, we are almost out of both, so if you want those, they will first come, first serve, and store for the sizes we have. Um, and I don't know what sizes we have currently, but... We definitely have plenty of the royal blue shirt, which is actually the one that I'm wearing, along with Josh on the left side of your screen. Um, and Andy on the right is doing the Carolina blue, and they are awesome. And they give you free entry into FNMs, so what's not to like? Uh, Andy's going to go down to 16 after Josh plays a Desolate Lighthouse and passes. Uh, looks like he might go down to 14, actually. Yeah, he's going to get another fetch land. Who knows, you might get a red sword, some Tarkus command or something. Andy's a crazy guy. Looks like it's a breeding pool. Um, Spell Sky can still redirect a bunch, so... Now, a Wild Defiance would be a good draw. Spell Sky of Andy's own coming down. Uh, Terminate is in Josh's hands, so there's an answer for that. Uh, it's going to get in there with both of his infectors.
and Josh is thinking about doing the block, and he's going to throw the block on the Glistener Elf and terminate the Blighted Agent. In which case, he... Apostle Blessings... Yeah, he's going to Apostle Blessing the Blighted Agent. Um, he could have redirected to Spellskite, but maybe he just wants to keep Spellskite open for something like a Lightning Bolt or something like that. Uh, Josh is going to take one Poison Damage, and Spellskite will get a minus one, minus one counter. Uh... And Andy goes down to 12 from the Apostle's Blessing loss of life. Serum Vision is going to come down for Josh, and I'm surprised he didn't leave the red up for Lightning Bolt. But he does have a Tazigrin in his yard, so that might be the reason. Uh, I don't think he can cast either, though. So, he has a Snapcaster. Josh is going to draw. Windswept, or Andy's going to draw. Windswept Heath comes down for Andy. And on the left side of your screen, we have Josh Black playing Grixis Twin. And on the right, we have Andy Martin playing Infect. Uh, he usually plays Mono Red. Um, and he's going to block Listener off again. And he says, that's fine. He's going to go up to 2 Poison. And it gets another minus 1, minus 1 counter, so it has 2 now. Uh, and Andy's going to play a third creature, uh, another Glistener Elf. Um, so now Josh needs a Anger of the Gods of some sort, uh, but if he plays that, I mean, it's going to wipe out a Spell Skite. Uh, and he's also going to play another Spell Skite, so uh, <laughs> this is going to be quite the battle. Uh, Andy is only at 12 and doesn't have any blue on tap, so if he Spell Skites here, he's going to lose a lot of life. Um, so right now Josh is thinking of things to do with his end step at Andy's end step uh, before he untaps. So we're going to try to get this uh, action to you tomorrow as well, starting at noon. Um, it's another sweet modern tournament with <clears throat> lots of awesome prizes to be won, including $250 cash and a Pro Tour, regional Pro Tour qualifier invite. Uh, so that's going to be pretty fun. Josh is going to go to 19, or actually probably 17. He's probably going to grab a Shockland untapped. Josh is going to search out a Blood Crypt and he's going to do Colagon's Command, dealing two to Blighted Agent and destroying Spellskite, which I'm pretty sure he could definitely redirect to the other Spellskite now. Uh, I think he was able to do that before, but Spellskite interactions are weird, uh, so a lot of people have trouble with them, including myself. I'm not I'm not ashamed to admit it. Uh, you know, I don't know this interaction very well, and I don't know what exactly is going to happen. Um, so they might have to call a judge to find out, which they probably will. They're probably yelling for Matt right now to see exactly what is going to happen. Yeah, looks like they're doing a judge call to find out this interaction, and I feel it very terrible that I actually don't know it and this is one that I feel like I should know and it looks like uh, Andy is going to pay two putting him down to 12 and it's going to kill one spell skite looks like that's what it did and he's going to murderous cut the other spell skite um, which is fine yeah he definitely can't just cast it for a black that would be ridiculous and it looks like he has Tassiger and an unknown card maybe a snapcaster in hand uh, Andy's gonna draw and he's at the point where he just needs to attack, I believe, or play Wild Defiance. A Wild Defiance would also be a very good card. <clears throat> 